It comes from above. Yes, you shall be a source and avenue. A fountain that will not run dry. That no man can trace the source. I said nobody can trace the source. You don't. I said no man can trace the source. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the Spirit. We are not finding ourselves. Amen. Nobody is sweating. Is God not faithful? God is faithful. Amen. Pray, friends. Let us praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mary Queen Okodobe for the privilege they always give to us every year in June to preach to teach to pray for the people that way <laughs> we will know that being a head being a pastor being a reverend a bishop, a bishop is not easy <laughs> To prepare one message is like, oh my God, oh my God. At least they do it every day. Every day. Amen. God is faithful. We thank God for the men and women of God God has given to us in this ministry. Reverend Victor, thank you. Pastor Mary Queen, thank you so much for the privilege. Amen. Praise God. Deuteronomy 30, 19. This is God speaking to the children of Israel through Moses. I read, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. This is God talking to me and you. He spoke to the children of Israel through Moses. He's talking to me and you now. He has given us the option. Choose life or death. Blessing and cause cousin but he said you should choose life amen 
truth life. Praise the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. This is Joshua's final speech to the children of Israel. I paraphrase. Choose you this day whom ye will serve. As for me, 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 and my heart, we will serve the Lord. Brethren, it's left to you to choose by yourself. I can't make the choice for you. Choose this day whom you will serve. Amen. Praise the Lord. Revelation 3.20 This is Jesus speaking to me and you. Behold, take a look. I stand at the door. I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him. And he with me. God is not forcing any one of us. He has given us the option. Pick the option you want. Then at the end of the day, if you pick the wrong option, you bear the consequences. Amen. Praise the Lord. By God's grace, we will choose the right option in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I titled my message this afternoon. You have the power to redefine your destiny. You, 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 you have the power to redefine your destiny. Like we read in the Sunday school manual, Jephthah was driven away, defined as the son of a harlot. It wasn't his own making, but he didn't go down, he didn't go and sit down. Woe me, woe me. He got up and left. He was expelled, sent on exile from his father's house. He left and God was with him. He decided he's going to redefine his destiny, which he did by the grace of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. The first step to redefine your destiny is when you talk to yourself. You have to talk to yourself. Nobody has to talk to you. It's you that will talk to yourself. Even the prodigal son that left, he came back to his senses. He talked to himself. I will return back to my father's house. Nobody talked to him. The swine, the pigs he was struggling with. He, they, they were even praying for this man to leave our food alone. But he talked to himself. Brethren, for you to redefine your destiny, you have to talk to yourself. The pastor cannot talk to you. The pastor will talk to you. Mm, whatever. Mm, pastor is always speaking on me. No! He's telling you the truth. The word of God says life, death. Pick whichever one you want. Brethren, let us learn to talk to ourselves. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have the authority. God has given you the authority to talk to yourself. Amen. Praise the Lord. As children of God, the authority has given to us to redefine our destiny. The world can call you whatever. They can call you anything. But you, you have the authority to redefine that destiny. Your destiny. What God has planned for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What have I defined yourself to? Heaven will back you up. 
just make the pronunciation, heaven will back you up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 10. Verse 46 to 52. Can somebody help me read? So that we'll, we'll fast. Mark 10, 46. And they came to Jericho, and he, as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind by Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging 47 and when he heard that he was jesus of nazareth he began to cry out and say jesus thou son of david have mercy on me hold on my sister praise the lord hallelujah but is his name but the world define him blind they attached blind to his name. Once you say Bartimaeus, maybe there are 50, they will ask you which one. Say blind Bartimaeus. This day, he decided, I'm sick and tired of this blind attached to my name. When he heard, he just heard, it was Jesus. It was Jesus. He spoke to himself. People bring him out there every day to beg for arms, to beg for money. But that very day, he said, I'm tired. I'm tired. Amen. Amen. The people that brought him here, they want him to always be there always be in that situation so that they are making merchandise of him that he was tired he spoke to himself verse 47 said and when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth he began to cry out and said Jesus thou son of David have mercy on me. Praise the Lord. Continue, my 48. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 49. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, be of good comfort. Rise, he called thee. Amen. One second. He was screaming on top of his voice. Thou son of David. People ask him to keep quiet. Shut up. He refused to be intimidated. If it's me and you... Uh, let me continue sitting down here. They are asking me, all these people are asking me to keep quiet. Instead of him keeping quiet, he shouted the more, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He struck a chord. Jesus turned around and stood still for him to call him son of David. He knew his roots. He stood still. He said, call him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Call him. Bring him forth. All those people hushing him to keep quiet. They ran and brought him. Continue. Verse 50. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. That oversized garment that will put on rag anything on him and bundle him out to beg. He threw away the oversized clothes. I 
and ran to Jesus. Continue. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Amen. Praise the Lord. When Jesus stood still and they brought him, he's a blind man. At least Jesus knew he was a blind man. He didn't open his eyes immediately. He gave him that option. What do you want? Is it money? He was ready to give him whatever he wants. He said that I may receive my sight and redefine my destiny and remove that blind attached to my name. Amen. Praise the Lord. And Jesus, verse 51. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith had made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Immediately. He received his sight. He followed Jesus. Most of us would have want to go home to show off our sight. Ah, I can now see. No! He followed Jesus. The one that has redefined his destiny. The author and finisher of our faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, verse 10 to 13. And I read. And he was teaching in one of the synagogue on the Sabbath. This is Jesus. He was teaching in one of the synagogue on the Sabbath. Verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. And he was bowed together could no wise lift up her face she was bent over couldn't even lift up her face 18 years she has been that way amen praise the Lord praise the Lord and when Jesus saw her he called her to him because he couldn't lift up her faith. So he wouldn't even, he, all she does is just go to church, receive the word. Amen. Jesus singled her out. Woman, thou art losing from thy infirmity. Jesus told her. Jesus singled her out. Verse 13. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight. The woman that was bent over, that can't even look up, was made straight and glorified God. Most of us, to come to church is a burden. I don't have this. I don't have this. 
God have not done this for me. God have not done that for me. Look at this woman bent over for 18 years. But she continued to serve God. She continued to come to church. She continued to attend all services despite her condition. You can imagine what people around her will be saying. Ah, this one, she's still going to church. The God she serves cannot even heal her. They will be talking behind her. But she knows that her day will break. Praise the Lord. She knows that her day will break. And this particular day, this woman that was faithful going to church every service day, despite her condition, until one day, one moment, her destiny was redefined by Jesus. Why are we quiet? 18 years bent over she still served God every service day most of us have been coming to church God is not answering my prayers I'm not coming anymore it's your business praise the Lord but this woman was faithful every service day she was there until her day break brethren continue to serve God faithfully do away with negative habits stop complaining and murmuring God has not done this God has not done that God gave you breath he wake you up every morning you have roof over your head you have food most of us we eat ten times me this not like me I have chop box in my bedroom at times, I get up and eat my snacks. Amen. Praise the Lord. And yet we complain. We murmur. We have roof over our head. We have jobs. At this job, please, I'm tired. People want that job that you are tired of. So many people are applicants. They are looking for jobs. They have the qualification. They are even more qualified than you. And yet, we are murmuring, we are complaining. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Amen. Sometimes God wants us to be crushed. So that something good will come out of us. Amen. Sometime. God does it that way. Let's see what happens. Amen. There is always a process. Spirits always see spirits. Our spirit man has to grow to see spiritual things. Amen. For you to see spiritual things. Your spirit man has to grow. Amen. But we don't want to study the word of God. We don't want to meditate on the word of God. We don't want to feed our spirit man. All we are interested is our body. Taking care of ourselves. Eat good food. Ten times a day. Drive the best car. Don't care about others don't care about the things of God. Brethren, seek ye this day. Whom? Choose. It's a choice. Whom you will serve. Amen. Praise the Lord. Revelation says, I stand at the door of your heart. Knocking. Knocking. If you open your heart, I will come in. God has the power to change everybody. No, he doesn't force people. He doesn't compel people. He gives you a choice. Most of the time, our children, we force them. 
you must eat this you must do this you must. but God doesn't force us he has given us the option to do what we want to do in the name of Jesus with her condition Jesus called her up and said you are loosened and she laid hands on her immediately her destiny was redefined I know people don't even know her name all this uh, don't you know that woman that is bent over they don't know her name even the Bible didn't even put a name amen don't you know that woman every Sunday every Wednesday every Thursday every Friday every she's in church don't you know her I don't know the one that was bent over but God redefined her destiny the people that talked her down the day that day she, that she was going to church by the time she comes back walking straight amen walking straight uh -uh. she will be wondering you mean all these things are on this street because she was bent over she was only able to look at the ground, the floor amen amen because we are comfortable we are fine, everything is going on well, we don't understand the pains of people going through stuff amen praise the Lord brethren as we prepare for our annual July prayer and fasting most of us including me I won't lie we recycle prayer points we usually write our prayer points every year July prayer and fasting most of the time you are supposed to think the ones God has answered in my own case there, is, there are some, not one that every year I recycle let us take a deep breath and talk to ourselves and make up our minds that this year destinies will be redefined in the name of Jesus first Samuel chapter 1 2 to 28 we won't read it because of time we all know the story of Hannah Hannah was defined as a barren woman by her mate Penina because she has sons and daughters she was a barren woman the womb that has been reserved amen praise the Lord the husband Elkanah every year they go to Shiloh with his whole family Berlin and her children Hannah that the world that her mates defined as barren they all go there to worship and sacrifice unto the Lord Amen if you read verse 6 to 7 her mate Bernina provoked her sore to irritate her she wept bitterly that year she wept bitterly all the other years it has been business as usual but this year because of the provocation of her mate she wept bitterly and refused to eat she talks to herself nobody talked to her all along her husband loved her he has been pampering her don't worry at least I love you am I not more than 10 sons but that day no I want my own she talked to herself nobody can talk to you it's you that will talk to yourself amen praise the Lord she said enough is enough she made up her minds whatever it takes this Shiloh 
will not be business as usual. It will not be business as usual. If you read 1 Samuel from verse 9 to 19, Hannah wept bitterly. She prayed. She fasted. She decided to make a vow. Not like the vow Jephthah made. She made a very good vow. She told God, if you, God, gives me a male son, a male child, she was specific. She didn't just say, God, if you give me a child, if you give me a male child, I will return this child back to you. Amen. That's a wonderful vow. Brethren, with our July prayer and fasting coming up in eight days, we should talk to ourselves. Talk to yourself. Your husband cannot talk to you. You cannot talk to your husband. Even your children. You, 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 you have to talk to yourself. You know what you want. Pray. Fast. Not it's 31 days you pick and choose the day you will come to church or the day you will join the prayer line. No! Don't let 31 days pass you by. Amen? God, you don't know the day God will meet, meet your prayer request. The day God will answer your prayer. Maybe it's the first day or the last day. We don't have to pick and choose. It's like the coming of Jesus. We don't know when. Nobody knows. Because if we know, oh, that day we will prepare and holy, holy. No. No holy, holy, holy. No, start now and continue to be holy, holy, holy until Jesus comes. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the Lord remembered Hannah. All her tears all her prayers mm. her fasting her vow God says wow we return a son to me God said mm -mm, this is too much he remembered her opened up her womb God redefined her destiny forever and ever and she conceived and had a male son, a male child, a prophet, prophet Samuel. He anointed King Saul and King David. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our merciful God. He is so merciful. All you have to do is to speak the word. He answers. But if you keep quiet, Hannah has been going to Shiloh. God knows how many years. But that Shiloh, that year, she said, no, I can't take this anymore. I can't take this insult from my mates anymore. I can't. This one is even within the house. What of others, outsiders, what are they saying about me? Enough is enough. Brethren, let us borrow a leaf from Hannah. This 2024 July prayer and fasting, it starts in about eight days or so. Mm. Mm. It will not be business as usual in the name of Jesus. He will answer our prayers. If you have some prayer points that you have been recycling, attach a vow to it, like Hannah, prayerfully, not like Jephthah. Jephthah was too zealous. The vow he made was ridiculous. Probably he thought maybe it's one of his servants, uh, a dog or a horse or anything will come out first. But it didn't happen that way. Amen. So before you make a vow unto God, pray about it. Not out of 
emotion out of seriousness you just make a vow that will cost you something you did not bargain for like Jephthah it was terrible but <laughs> being a man that loves God that God has redefined his destiny he decided to keep his vow he decided to make his promise to God he decided to keep to his promise and even daughter when he told the daughter he taught his children very well his family he taught them well the daughter said no problem you can imagine if he didn't teach the daughter that one would just run away he will run away all he did just give me time and the Lord Jephthah prayerfully honored her daughter's request and at the end of the day he fulfilled his vow Hannah after one year the next year Shiloh he dressed up little little Samuel and returned him back to God to Eli the priest to nurture him amen and God being God her womb was opened she started having she had more children after Samuel amen praise the Lord most of us God will give us something we'll hold on to it tight we don't even want to let go he gave it out happily amen praise the Lord praise the Lord God is so faithful he is so faithful many people in the Bible they have made vows to they have prayed they have asked God if you do this I will do that brethren this year let us make a vow unto God a vow that we will redeem happily I remember when my second son went to the army the military marine oh my god my heart was broken I wasn't home when he just joined the marine I came back they said he he has gone ah I cried my heart out I prayed I fasted I told God if he comes back on hot on scratched I will do this for you and God honored it I said God honored my prayers and my vow and immediately he came back mm, it was but I redeemed my vow immediately brethren make a vow that you can redeem happily the prayer bowls are there start writing your prayer request prayerfully you have to walk behind the scene amen talk to yourself no play in this time 31 days clean up your schedule we can adjust our schedules after all most of us we take vacation one month two months six weeks we go out if you have to take vacation take vacation if you have to take time off here and there take time off make sure you participate you bring your situation that you want God to redefine for you you bring it to the table amen praise the Lord praise the Lord brethren 2024 July prayer and fasting will be different from all the other ones in the name of Jesus let us pray let us pray let us pray we all have Goliaths in our lives we all have Goliaths confronting us let us pray and ask God Lord, redefine every Goliath in my life. Every Goliath 
in our lives should be redefined this year in the name of Jesus. Is it Goliath of sickness? It has to be redefined. In as much as we don't have any chronic sickness, some of us, maybe your teeth, your leg, your arm, is still sickness. Let God redefine it in the name of Jesus. Is it poverty? Hand to mouth. Children of God is not supposed to be a portion. The name of Jesus. It's a Goliath confronting us. Every month we have our list. We bear our wheels. We jump up. It's not supposed to be so. Amen. Praise the Lord. Every Goliath confronting us in the name of our Jesus finances, our spiritual Spirit life the Great and is that is in we me. come to church we hear the word of God by the time we walk out here oh it's God Shatter. it's a Goliath yes when you don't return the word of God the word of God it's a problem you have to talk to yourself. You have to redefine it. It has. God has to take care of it. God has to redefine our situation. Is it disappointment? Each time you are disappointed. Each time disappointment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. As children of God, it's Goliath. It has to be addressed. It has to be rooted. Be defeated. It has to be addressed. Once and for all. That Goliath. Every threat. Has to be defeated. In the name of Jesus. Father Lord. Is it an achievement? Is there anything too hard? Struggle, struggle, struggle. Greater is he that is in us. It's Goliath. It has to be addressed. We come in the name of the Lord God Almighty. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every situation. Every mountain. In the name of Jesus. In our lives. The level of Jesus. It has to be leveled. In the name of Jesus. Who are down all mountain. Who are down all mountains. Shall become a place. It will become a place. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Us as a ministry, yes, Lord. It will become a prayer in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Mighty Jehovah, we pray, Lord, oh, as that this 2024 July prayer and fasting situations in our lives will be redefined Amen. in the name of Jesus. Every mountain. Confronting us as a ministry will be redefined in the name of the Jesus. Mighty Jehovah, we thank you for this place of worship. But mighty Jehovah, we want to be redefined. We want our own, our own place of worship. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely. Goodness, goodness and, and mercy, mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord, Lord forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Exodus 14, 14 states, The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Amen. Praise the Lord.